Okay guys, so this is a uh, supplement to the tutorial for the spring mass damper, so I'm just going to walk through this code here real quick. So we have the function header, spring mass damper, we uh, clear the uh, command window, and then close all figures. Uh, we just display spring mass damper program. Um, here we initialize a state vector, so this spring mass damper has one degree of freedom. It can only move left and right but every degree of freedom has two states, so you have x and x dot, or in this case, position and velocity, uh, you know, however you want to call them, that's what they are. So right now the initial position is one, and then the initial velocity is negative two meters per second. Um, so this is in meters and this is in meters per second. Um, so then we call the state dot uh, derivative routine, and uh, we'll get to that in a sec. We uh, define all of these time variables here, so the final time is 10, initial time is 0, time step is 0.1, we make the time vector, allocate our state vector here, and then finally we do the RK4 uh, function call in, uh, in this loop for IDX equals 1 to time. So I have a separate uh, video on RK4 if you want to look that up, um, but basically we just we call the function four times with this you know state propagation forward uh, average all of our state derivatives and then propagate the system forward once this loop is done our simulation is essentially essentially done so then here I plot the control as a function of time I then pull out the position and the velocity from the state vector that I saved and then I plot the position and velocity now, after that, we can get into these functions. So remember, whenever you have nested functions, so you have, oh gosh, you have a, uh, a function within a function, your functions need to be all the way at the bottom. So all of your functions need to be at the very end. So here, state dot is the output, derivatives is the name of the function, and the inputs are state and control. I define my, uh, my mass here and my uh, damping coefficient here and then my spring constant here and then I make my state matrix here and I derived this just using uh, basic dynamics and then my control uh, matrix here B and then here's my state dot uh, A times state plus B times U control and then that's it that's the entire uh, state um, derivatives routine um, so then down here I do something kind of fancy I, I create a PID controller so here I set the uh, proportional gain, and I'll explain this a little bit more in more detail in a sec, and then my derivative gain here, and then this is, this is where I want the mass to go, and then this is how fast I want the mass to go, and then you control, this is just initializing my control effort. So here, this is just a standard PID controller here, and this is only on when time is greater than five. So time is an input here. So before five, you control a zero, and then once time is greater than zero, boom, I turn this control on. So if I just hit play here, um, I get some plots, and you see, um, as I was saying here, the, the control force here is zero, and then finally at, at five seconds, boom, control is turned on. There's a huge spike, and then it, it settles out, and then it becomes constant here. Um, so then in my position, if you notice here, so it's initially at one, and then because you know there's a spring mass damper and there's a restoring force, my position comes down, and then it's about to settle out to zero, but then boom, I hit turn on control and it tries to get to one. Now if you notice, it doesn't quite get to one, um, and that's really just because of something we call steady state error. Um, you would have to add in integral gain, but I didn't want to add in integral gain just because it makes the math a little bit complex. Um, but then we look at the velocity here again, the velocity is negative two, and then it slowly ramps down to zero, but then boom, I turn on the controller and it, it turns on. So let's do some uh, cool things here just so you understand what's happening. So if I actually just um, comment out this line of code and hit play, um, now you'll see that the control effort is zero um, for all time. And now my position actually just settles out and my velocity settles out. So everything just kind of settles out to zero. Um, here I can change my state vector, so I can make the initial state 10, and then my velocity, my initial velocity zero. And so now you'll notice that my initial position is 10, but then it ramps down and settles out to zero. And then here my velocity is initially zero, and then it speeds up and kind of ramps down. Um, I could make my initial position zero and my initial velocity five, 
And then now what you'll notice is the position is zero, but then because the velocity is five, the mass uh, ramps up to a position up here and then slowly comes back down. And so, you know, this is a stable system that no matter what you do to it, it'll always return to zero. So the idea is, well, what if I don't want it to return to zero? What if I want it to go back to 10? Well, when I hit F5 here, now what you'll notice is that the initial velocity is 5, so the mass in initially increases and then it comes back down and settles to zero. But then because of this uh, PD controller, it, the control kicks on at 5 seconds and then boom, the uh, mass starts to increase and go up to 10. And again, it doesn't quite get to 10, but it, but it tries to. And so you can make your X command negative 10, and if you run that, your, um, your mass will go to negative 10 instead, okay? So now let's talk about these gains here. Um, what we can do is I'm gonna comment out this line of code here again, and I'm gonna hit F5. So now we have um, this situation where it's the position is initially zero and then it settles out. If I go to the my spring and my damping coefficient, if I make my damping coefficient zero, notice here that my system oscillates from forever and never actually settles out. If I make my damping coefficient one, it'll it'll settle out um, eventually, but it still takes quite a bit of time. If I make my damping constant big, like five, it settles out right away. I mean, it's critically damped and it just comes back to zero. Now, the reason why I have this here is because if I make my damping constant zero and I hit play, this is gonna oscillate forever. Well, if I try to turn control on and try to command it to 10 and set my derivative gain to zero, notice that the position tries to get to 10, but it just oscillates forever and it never actually gets to 10. And the reason why is because you have this derivative gain here. So if you look at the derivative gain, it's saying take my current state two, and state two is my current velocity. If you'd like, what you can do is you can do current position equals state of one, and then current velocity equals state of two, and then you could substitute that in here, and that might be able to help you out. Current position, and then current velocity. So if I hit play now, the code will do exactly the same thing. Look at my position, it's oscillating, and then control turns on to get me to 10, but I oscillate back and forth. And so again, if you look at the derivative gain, it's taking the current velocity, subtracting it from my x dot command. And my x dot command is zero, but my derivative gain is zero. So I'm not actually penalizing the mass for moving. All I'm doing is I'm applying a force when my current position is different than my command. So when my current position is 10, 10 minus 10 is zero, I don't apply any force. But because there's no penalty on my velocity, my velocity is gonna to continue to oscillate. So if I look at my velocity, my velocity is going back and forth because I don't actually put any penalty on there. So if I make my derivative gain 10, and I come back in here, now I've penalized the velocity, and now the PD controller the velocity initially ramps up, but then it settles to zero. And that's because I made my x dot command zero. So if we go back to now position, position now, it doesn't oscillate anymore, and I actually settle out to here. Now if we look at this, the speed of this um, ramp here, what if I want it to get to 10 way faster? Well, I could make my proportional gain 300, and now if you notice, I really crank up there. Like if we look at the control force, look at the force of control. The force of control is huge. And that's because I try to get there as fast as I can. Now the thing is, if you notice, there's some crazy stuff happening here. So one of the things is, it looks like our time step needs to be smaller because this looks really jagged. So I'm gonna go up here and I'm actually gonna make my time step smaller. I'm gonna hit play again. And so now we can see a little bit better in here now it's a little bit smoother. But I still don't like all of this oscillation. So what if I what I can do is I can say, okay, well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at my velocity, and man, my velocity is getting big. I mean, 100, and that should be meters per second. You know, 100 meters per second, that's really big. So I'm gonna penalize it more, and I'm gonna make my derivative gain 100. And now if you look, 
the velocity only goes up to 20, and look at that curve. It's super smooth. But if you notice, I actually didn't go there that fast. So you penalize velocity, you don't get there as quickly. So let's make it maybe 50. And now that's a pretty good curve. You know, we're ramping up fairly quickly. The velocity doesn't get too fast. And my control effort, that's pretty big, 1,500 newtons. But um, if your actuator can handle it, you can go for it. So that's pretty much um, this code in a nutshell, and uh, hopefully that will help you out. I uh, encourage you to just change numbers here and, you know, um, just see what happens. See how it changes your code um, or your simulation. All right, good luck.